So as Mrs Evans said, I'm Laura Etherington. I am the FS2 lead here at Heartland International School, and I also lead on maths here at Heartland. Um, so I'm just going to go over with you today um, what maths looks like in foundation stage. I'm just going to share my screen here. Can everybody see my screen? Okay, so our focus for the session today is something called subitizing, and this is a really exciting thing. It's not something new, but it's something that's come into our curriculum, and it's something that not many people are aware of or what it actually is, um, but it's a big focus for us in the early years. So I'm going to um, go over what subitizing looks like. So the aims for today's session are to understand the expectations for math in foundation stage, to explore the term subitizing and what this looks like in early maths, and also some ways to support your child at home. So here are some nice pictures that I always think it's nice to share some pictures of the children in action. So this is maths in foundation stage. It's interactive, it's practical, it's fun, it's collaborative, it's engaging, it's meaningful. And I like to, I like that word meaningful because in foundation stage, we like to make all of our learning relevant and meaningful to the children. So why do they need to count? Why do they need to know money? And why do they need to know their numbers? How is that going to help them? So we love to put our learning into a context. So we sometimes do this through role play. They, there might be a shop and we talk about money and the children have to, use the money to buy things and that's putting it into a context for them. So there's just some nice pictures of what maths might look like for us. This year we are using the new early years curriculum and it's changed slightly from our old curriculum and I'm just going to go over some of the key changes. So these are the expectations for the end of foundation stage. So this is also relevant for parents who have got a child in FS1 and also in FS2, because it gives you an idea of what your child will need to know by the end of FS2. So in number, it's broken up into two sections, number and numerical patterns. The children need to have a deep understanding of number to 10, including the composition of each number. So they need to know their bonds. So that means if they know the number five, do they know how to make five? Do they know that three and two makes five? Do they know that four and one makes five? So they really need to have an understanding of each of those numbers to 10. Subitize, so recognize quantities without counting up to five, and I'll go into that in a bit more detail shortly. And automatically recall number bonds up to five and some number bonds to 10. So that includes the doubling and the halving. So that brings in the addition and subtraction. So there's quite a lot that the children learn in mathematics in foundation stage, and it's actually really important. It's a crucial time in the children's learning to really get those concepts for mathematics, which will support them as they move throughout the primary school. Numerical patterns. So we want the children to be able to verbally count beyond 20 and recognizing the, the pattern of the counting system. We need the children to compare quantities up to 10, recognizing when one quantity is greater, less than, or the same. So we're looking for the children to use that language of more and fewer and the same. And the language around mathematics in the early years is really important. And we do a lot of work on encouraging the children to use their language to compare objects, to talk about shape, to talk about size, and explore and represent patterns with the numbers up to 10. This includes even and odds, double facts, et cetera. And I think I'm just going to share this quote with you because I find this quite interesting. It says, some children love number and love counting. Some may be less keen to count and explore number. However, every child can succeed if we provide an environment that the child finds engaging. And this is definitely true in mathematics. If you think about your child and you think, do they love counting? Have they always had that natural awe and wonder about number and about maths? Maybe they have. Maybe your child has been a bit more reluctant to count or they're not as interested in numbers. But at Heartland and at school in the early years, we thrive to ensure that every child succeeds by creating that environment that's engaging for the children. 
and that makes it exciting. And if the children have an exciting environment, they will succeed. So they're the main changes really with the curriculum. So there's a lot more focus really on numbers to 10 um, in the new curriculum. And I'll go on to why that's really important. So subitizing, what is subitizing and what does it look like? So think back to the last time you played a board game. Every time you rolled the dice, you didn't need to count how many dots were on the dice. You just knew. And this is something that you learned when you were a child. You knew straight away how many spaces to move because you knew how many dots were on the dice. You didn't have to count the dots on the dice. So what you're doing is subitizing. And subitizing is the ability to look at a small number of objects and instantly recognize how many there are without needing to count. So when your child is rolling a dice, you might notice that already they don't have to count, they recognize the pattern on the dice. And this is a, quite a regular pattern that they would see quite often on a dice. They might just be able to say, yeah, that's six. And that means that they are subitizing. And now this is a skill that they develop as they grow up. So if they can't do it just yet, that's fine. But next time you're playing a game with your child and they're rolling a dice, see, does your child automatically recognize the dots or do they still have to count? It's now recognized as a really important skill in early mathematical development and in young children. And this is the skill that children need even before they start counting. So actually research shows that babies even begin to subitize. They naturally know that they have two eyes or they have one nose and they don't have to count. They, may not, they might not know the number, um, but they're automatically seeing those patterns. So this is a really important skill that we are developing in children in the foundation stage. So subitizing is just as important and in some ways an easier skill to attain than counting because it's about noticing those patterns. Being able to subitize means that future skills such as counting, adding and subtracting come more easily and make more sense. So if children can already see a pattern when they become um, older and they want to count and add, then those skills are already developed. And I'm going to show you some pictures now to put it into a context for you. So how do we subitize? There's two types of subitizing, perceptual and conceptual. So perceptual subitizing happens naturally. So our brains can cope with recognizing up to five objects quite easily. And this is the same for children. Um, conceptual subitizing happens in numbers above five. So the brain cannot immediately see the whole amount. So instead it looks for smaller groups within a bigger arrangement. So if you look at my picture on the left of the dice patterns, the children begin to learn to recognize quickly a regular arrangement. So a dice, for example, is a regular arrangement. And this is something that they'll see over and over again. And they'll begin just to recognize that without having to count. As we move on to step two, you can see here, you, I can see a group of three and I can see a group of five. And actually children naturally start to use that language. They say, I can see five and I can see three, which then, as children's mathematical development develops, we would say how many all together. They'll be able to maybe put five in their head and count on the extra three. And separating and combining numbers is the basis to addition and subtraction. So being able to see five and being able to see three and knowing that we can put them together to see a total. So that's really the next step to subitizing. Step one is recognizing the patterns. Step two is putting two larger groups together. So this is subitizing in context. So one of the biggest things is that we don't ask children, how many are there? We say, what can you see? What do you notice about the picture? So if you look at my raspberries on the left, children might say, I can see five because they recognize the pattern of five from a dice and I can see four. And then as an adult, we'd say, what do you notice about those two numbers? Can we add them together? How many altogether? 
Children might see different things. They might see a five, a three, and a one, and they'll be able to add those together to find a total. If you look at my picture on the right with the, with the strawberries, how many can you see? So children might say, I can see two, three, and two, or they might be able to see another amount. And there's no right or wrong answer. They could see it in different ways. They might see a one, 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 and a one, um, or they might see it in groups. And obviously as the children develop with their subitizing skills, we would expect the children to begin to see the numbers in a different group. I like this image, and this is something that can easily be done at home when children are having a snack or they've got fruit or they've got some sweets and something that's really easy. So here, what can you see? What do you notice? So I can see four groups of three. And if you notice the language, they're actually beginning to talk about multiplication and actually division as well, how many groups go into something. So all of this language and all of these things that the children are noticing are the early skills for multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Or they might say, I can see three groups of four, or they might say, I can see two groups of six. And then that brings in your doubles, six and six makes 12. So all of that knowledge just through one picture or one item. And then as you can see, We've taken two bikes out. So have we got more blueberries now or have we got fewer blueberries? We've got fewer. How many have gone? So the children should be able to notice that two have gone, which is when we then start to bring in our subtraction. There's now fewer because we've eaten some blueberries. So again, rather than encouraging the children to count, encouraging the children to see the pattern with the blueberries. What do you notice now? Okay, so now I can see a six, I can see a three, and I can see a one. So getting some, them to notice the numbers within that group. And of course, some children might naturally still count, or they might check, actually encouraging children to see it in a different way. One of the big things we um, use in the early years is stories, and stories have an incredible, incredible power for lots of things speech and language, um, literacy skills, but also for maths. So there's some stories which are very maths focused. So for example, this is um, How Do Dinos Count to Ten? So it's quite a specific maths book. Um, but already in this, even without reading the words, so if we don't look at the words, we just look at the pictures. How many socks can you see? So the children might count or they might say, I can see a two, a group of two, and I can see a group of four. With the cars, the children should be able to see that there's just three cars without needing to count. And there are just two balloons because again, that's a number one to five and children can recognize that quite easily. You might say, how many, how many red things can you see in the story? You can see a red car, a red balloon and a red sock. So three red things. So you might actually get the children to sort and recognize an amount by sorting. So stories have an incredible power to ask those questions, not only for understanding, but also for maths. So thinking about how, what you can see in a story to encourage your child to subitize or count. Even without having words in a story, there's always something in a picture um, that children can count or subitize. This is a bit more of an abstract story. This is a picture book called The Window. And it's got some amazing pictures which have um, lots of things that can be used for maths. So straight away, when I look at this picture, what do you see? What do you notice about the dinosaurs? How many dinosaurs altogether? Can you see any numbers? So straight away in this picture, this one picture, one page from a story, there's an opportunity for subitizing. There's four dinosaurs. I can see three on one side and one on the other. So there's four all together. I can also see a numeral. I can see the numeral number six. So straight away, there's lots of opportunities for maths talk. And that's also encouraging the children's understanding of a story as well, even through using maths. 
Okay, I would like you to have a go now. So from what we've just done together and listening to me in the way that I've spoken about the story, I want you to look at these three cupcakes. So this is something that you could do with your child at home when you're baking or making something. So your turn. Imagine you are your child. I want you to think, what can you see? What do you notice? So think of groups of things. What do you notice? If you would like to take part in this activity, you can type in my comment box and let me know what do you see? What do you notice about the three cupcakes? What numbers can you see? So if you can type into the comment box and I will have the chat open um, and just tell me what you see. How do you see it? How do you see numbers in this picture? So I'll give you an example to start. Don't be shy, everybody. You just have to type. Um, I won't call anybody out. You just need to type. Yep, so I can see six ears. Yep, great. Three cupcakes, six eyes, six ears. Yep. Anybody else? Three number bonds, super. Can anybody see some doubles there? We've got double one. Three cupcakes, two ears on each cake, yeah. Super. Anybody else? Six whiskers in one cat, six whiskers on each. Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to share my answers. Thank you everybody for your answers. Let's have a look. So I can see three cakes. I can see six here. So I can see two and two and two. That makes six. I can see six whiskers on each cake, three and three. So straight away, you've got your doubles there. The children are saying three and three, that makes six. Or 18 whiskers. So the children might want to count all of them to see how many. I can see six eyes, two, two and a two. Six teeth, two add two, add two. And one cake even represents number 10. So he's got 10 features there. So already just through that one picture, you can see so much maths that you can talk about and allowing children to count, allowing children to subitize, allowing children to develop that language around doubling. And what about if I now took three of the whiskers away? That's bringing in halves. How many do I have left? So just through one picture or one cupcake, there's so much maths that can take place. So I'm going to go on for our last few minutes about representing numbers. So one of the big misconceptions in early years mathematics is that your child might be able to count to 100. They might be able to count to 200, which is fantastic. And of course, we value that. That's amazing that the children are already have that interest and want to count. Some children might not be able to, and that's also OK. Um, but in the early years, we do really focus on those numbers to 10. Um, and it's absolutely fine for children to recognize numbers above that and to be able to count above that. But really, as you can see um, from the pictures in the previous slide, it's about the language around um, the maths and using the language about addition and about subtraction in a way that the children don't even really know that they're talking about addition or they're talking about doubles, but they are naturally just talking about it. So it's really important to develop children's curiosity and independence and fluency in maths. So at Heartland in our foundation stage, we ensure that the children leave the foundation stage with a deep understanding of numbers. So not necessarily being able to count to a thousand, but being able to understand their numbers to 10, being able to do their number bonds to 10, their number bonds to five, add, subtract, because if children have the concept of addition and subtraction to 10, really they notice the patterns, which then supports them as they move through the school and they're working with bigger numbers because it really is the same pattern. So representing numbers. In the early years, we, the children do learn to write their numbers, but we have a big focus on representing numbers. So understanding that 
number is more than just being able to write, write the numeral. So it's great if the children can write their numbers and we encourage that, but it's, it is more than that. So we need to, the children need to know that they can represent numbers in many different ways, not just as a written numeral. So in school, we use lots of different objects and pictures to show that numbers can be represented in lots of ways. Another big thing is being able to reason. So reasoning helps children to explain their thinking, therefore making it easier for them to understand what is happening in maths and what they're doing. So it helps them to think about how to solve a problem, explain how they solved it, and to think about what they could do differently. So for example, when they're counting objects or adding, we give the children skills to use different types of objects, things like 10 frames, part, part, whole models, where the children can actually use different things to support them. What helps them to add numbers best? Is it using a 10 frame? Is it using their fingers? How, how is it best to support them? So for example, I've chosen the number five because in FS2, lots of children are turning five. So it's quite an important number for those children in FS2. What is a child's image of the number five? Do they recognize it in their environment? and understand that the number five isn't just written as a number. Can they draw five? Can they find other objects that show the number five? And do children notice ways to make a number? For example, dominoes are an amazing way um, to support maths with young children. So the domino that I can see there is a four and a one. Do they understand that that makes five? And that's still showing five, even though it's two different numbers. On a note, on a five dear note, do they recognize a five? Do they know that that also shows five? And one of the ways we challenge children is, okay, you recognize five. Can you tell me anything that doesn't show five? So I can already see the number six, that doesn't show five. What's different about the number six? The number six is one more. So allowing children to talk and share their knowledge about what they can see. And when you're, outside or you're in the mall or you're walking through your apartment block maybe spotting numbers oh can you see any numbers it might be a big number on um an apartment number it might be you know 105 but the children might recognize the one they might recognize the five they might recognize the zero so just looking at numbers and getting children to see what they can see when you're playing games like dominoes what does that make a four and a one? Oh, it makes five so those matching games. Reasoning. So reasoning is really deepening that understanding. And this is one of the challenging areas for children in maths because they have to explain how they know something. And we do a lot of work on this. And this is something that we use in FS1 and FS2. So I've got some cookies here. Again, my question to the children would be, which cookie is the odd one out? How do you know? Prove it. So I would expect the children to see their number patterns. So on the first cookie, for example, they might know straight away that's a number five because it looks like a number five on a dice. There's some more abstract patterns there where they might have to group. So the one at the bottom, they might have to group a three and a two to know that's five. And then I would want the children to say, oh, the odd one out is the cookie that shows four because all of the other cookies show five but that cookie shows two and a two, and that makes four. And then you might say, oh, how many more chocolate chips would I need to make five? And the children will then develop that understanding of we need one more. So it's using that language. And language is a really important tool in maths to really articulate that thinking and understanding of number. So I'm going to go on to now some top tips. So at the end of this session, I want you to go away with these four top tips for mathematics in the early years. So my first top tip for parents at home is to teach mathematics through stories and show how the characters in the books use maths to solve problems that are meaningful and engaging to the children. So just like we looked at the two stories previous, spotting things on the page which encourage children to count or notice similarities and differences, maybe things that match, maybe things that don't match grouping objects together. There's lots of, lots of things in storybooks to support that mathematical development. 
one of the things that we have a lot of focus on now is not asking how many can you see, but rather change your language and ask the children, what do you see? How do you see it? Because remember, everybody sees things differently. I might see a pattern in a picture differently to what you might see. I might see the groups different. And it's actually really interesting to notice how quickly children develop that skill to what they notice. So at home this evening, when your children come home, rather than saying, how many apples can you see in the fruit bowl? Ask them, what do you see? How do you see it? And it's just changing that language. It gives the children more opportunity to talk and share their understanding. Allow children to see the importance of maths in real life context. For example, do we have enough strawberries to share between everyone at the dinner table? Can you get me five apples from the shop? Can you match the pair of socks from the washing? So get your children to help you with the washing. Can they match all the socks? Can they match them together? Can you use the timer to brush your teeth? How many minutes does it take you to get dressed? What number apartment or house are we? So just allowing children to recognize that math is everywhere. And, some, and time's a really good thing to develop at this young age. How long does it take you to get ready? It takes you two minutes next time we're going to try and get ready in one. So giving children that challenge of time because time's quite a hard concept. So in the foundation stage, we expose children to time, time in different things. How long does it take? And they then get an understanding of what does a minute look like? What does two minutes look like? Mathematics in foundation stage is not about just counting to 100 and beyond. Remember, the more time we focus on numbers, lower numbers in the early years, the more fluent your child will be in mathematics. So the more time we give the children to develop their understanding of numbers to 10, the more fluent they'll be in multiplication, division, addition, subtraction as they move through the school. So just think about your child and it's not about just knowing numbers to 100, it really is deepening that understanding like we've seen today, that subitizing, that understanding that number looks different and there's so much that the children can get from numbers to 10, so many skills that the children can develop at this stage, which will support them as they go on to the bigger numbers throughout primary. I'm going to send this presentation out to parents afterwards, so don't worry about um, noting these down, but I've put down four apps or websites which are really useful in supporting your child in mathematics. So if this is something that you use at home, if your child uses tablets or iPads, there's some um, great things to support maths. I've just put four top tip ones. There's actually a subitizing flashcard app, which is great. It's got different flashcards for subitizing, which is a great one and linked to our theme this session. Um, Moose Maths, a top marks website, which is a website, but it's tablet friendly and a Bebot app as well. I'm not going to go through this in too much detail, but I've also put some top tip games that you can play at home. So it's got some different, different types of games that you could play at home. So finding groups of objects, um, showing different groups and seeing if it shows a number or if it doesn't show a number, sorting and classifying and a time game as well. So I'll send this out later so that you can have a read through those. And they all encourage subitizing. And then I've just put some general tips on supporting children at home. So counting how many steps up the stairs, maybe the children get some pocket money. So maybe can they count money into their money box? Dominoes are a fantastic um, method for supporting your child at maths. So I would suggest if you don't have um, dominoes at home, I know you can get giant ones for outside or you can get smaller ones. They're a really effective tool to support your child in maths. Um, there's also a program called Number Blocks. Um, so if your child does have some screen time, Number Blocks is a fantastic, um, it's been developed by early years specialists and math specialists, and it really does support that understanding of number. And it's a fun, there's little characters, and we use the characters in school to help um, the children with their um, number recognition. And obviously just read books. So I'm going to send this out so you can have a look 
through the ideas and the games. If there are any questions, feel free to type them into the question box now, or you can of course email myself or Mrs Evans on our email addresses. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. If there are any questions, if you can pop them in the chat box and we'll do our best to answer them for you. And if you don't want to do that now, you can always drop us an email at the end of the session. Any questions? Just give you a minute in case you think of anything that you'd like to share. Okay, hopefully that's given you um, some tips to support your child and giving you a bit of understanding of what maths does look like in the early years and in foundation stage. And um, I hope you found it useful and thank you for your time today. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to end the meeting now. Thank you very much. <laughs>